Hi there, and welcome to another one of my video Bible lessons. Hope you guys are having a good Christmas season. Uh, today we're going to um, do talk about Joseph, not Mary and Joseph, uh, the other Joseph from the Old Testament. Uh, some of you might know Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat. So we're going to start a series talking about Joseph. So the story of Joseph begins in Genesis 37. Or actually 27 with his father. Or yeah, 37. So uh, we'll go to 37. In Genesis, if you're following along. Verse 1. Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger. In the land of Canaan. So the first principle we will discuss is all things work together for good. Jacob's father was Isaac. And Jacob had a twin brother named Esau. Most of us probably would, would have preferred Esau over Jacob if we had met, met them because Jacob was a swindler. The reason Jacob was blessed and Esau wasn't had nothing to do with the differences in their personalities or characters. Jacob's name means Chrysler or Keisler. And he was always searching for ways to cheat others to benefit himself. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Esau sold his birthright to Jacob for a bowl of lentil stew. And that is found in Genesis 25, verse 34. And, and Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils, and then he ate and drank and rose and went away. Thus, Esau despised his birthright. In Genesis 27, one of the most familiar stories about Jacob is recounted. Jacob's father, Isaac, was old and nearly blind, and Isaac could called Esau and asked him to hunt for wild game and prepare his favorite meal. Isaac was speaking to Esau, and Rebekah's, Esau's mother, was listening. And after Esau left to hunt, Rebekah relaxed. And what she had heard to Jacob, or relayed, whoops, relayed. <laughs> they devised a scheme to deceive Isaac and steal the blessing from the firstborn. Rebekah prepared a meal for Jacob. She put the skins of goats on his hands and neck and sent him to his father with the, with the stew. Because Jacob didn't sound like Esau, Isaac asked him to come near so he could feel his hands. And when he felt the gold hair on Jacob and smelled the aroma of the outdoors, uh, Jacob, uh, Isaac blessed him with the blessings of the firstborn. Verses uh, 2 and 3. Uh, Genesis 37. Let's see here. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah and his, and his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report to them and his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a tunic of many colors. So Joseph was the youngest of his brothers, yet his father gave him authority over his older brothers. And he brought him a bad report about his brothers. Verse 2 says, The lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah. Sons of Bilhah were Dan and Naph Naphtali. And the sons of Zilpah were Gad and Asher. Verse 3 states very clearly that Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other sons. The fact combined with Joseph's bringing up to his father about his report to his brothers every day. Even though the reports were true, it was a recipe for envy and anger and resentment. Jacob made a mistake in showing partiality towards Joseph over his other brothers. They grew to hate Joseph. One way Jacob 
demonstrating his partiality was making Joseph a special coat of many colors. Most of us have seen images of what others imagined that the Joseph's coats may have looked like. However, the Hebrew says the coat had long sleeves and it was the symbol of authority representing Joseph's authority over his brothers. <clears throat> Every time his brothers saw him coming toward him, wearing his coat, it reminded him it, remind, it was a reminder of his authority over them. Verse 4. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all, his brothers, they, they hated him and could not speak peacefully about him. So they hated, the hatred of Joseph's brothers began here. First John 3, verse 15. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So because Joseph's brothers hated him, they were guilty of mental murder, which manifests later in this story. How did the hatred build in the hearts for Joseph? Verse 8, and his brother said, shall you indeed reign over us? I'll get back to uh, the other verses, so don't worry. Shall you indeed reign over us, or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So that they hated him even more for his dreams and his words. So notice what happened here in the middle of verse 8. They hated him even more. Sometimes an individual may feel justified by hating or being or, uh, justified in hating, but hatred is the opposite of the love of God. If we allow bitterness to fester in for what seems unfair, God will hold us accountable. But if we but if we determine to walk in love, even if something is unjust, God will turn it around for our good. If we allow hatred and mental sins in our lives, God will not work all things together for good, regardless of the attacks from the world or Satan. Or the circumstances confronting us, when we walk in love towards those around us, there's no such thing as a setback. Verses 18 to 20. Now when they saw him afar off, even before he came came to them, they conspired against him to kill him. And they said to one another, Look, this dreamer is coming. Come, let us now kill him and cast him into the pit. And we shall see, and we shall say, some wild beast have devoured him. We shall see what becomes of his dreams. I will discuss uh, that more, because like I said, we're covering all the chapter, but uh, s some I'm going out, out of place, but uh, we will cover every single chapter. And every single verse. And Joseph's brothers had sinned and had grown, fr uh, and their sin had grown from thoughts of hatred towards him, to actually planning to murder him, and they would cut, and the, and then how they would cover it up. The sin had gone from thoughts to words being spoken out of their mouths. In Proverbs twenty three verse seven says, For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And Matthew twelve verse seven or no verse thirty four uh, says, For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. So the brothers, what the brothers say is, look at this dreamer. What was their, it, what was in their heart that they had been uh, given voice? They were beginning to mock Joseph. And in verse 20, they verbalized what they planned in their hearts and in their actions. We will kill him and we'll see what becomes of his dreams. Back in verse 4, 
when the brothers saw that the father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peacefully about him. From verse 4 on, Joseph's brothers did not address Joseph uh, cordially. There was no peace, a peaceable conversation between them. It was likely some of us have been in a similar situation where there was an invisible wall hindering communication between one another. And regardless of what was said to assuage the block in communication, the problem was not solved. So that is the end of uh, lesson one in Joseph. We will get into what happens with his brothers and see what happens to Joseph in the future. Um, so we'll leave it there and we'll continue. Uh, I'll try and post more maybe tomorrow or next week. I know it's uh, getting close to Christmas. So um, I thought this was a really good lesson. I'm, I'm reading about it myself. I'm learning from it. I hope you guys learn from these lessons too. Um, but the lesson you can take today is um, if you do have anger, um, it's not very good. Because um, like I said, there's times, uh, you know, you might feel right um, to feel angry at somebody. But um, it's all you're doing is hurting yourself. And the person you might be angry at might not even know you're angry at them. Um, they, like they might have done something like one or two years ago uh, to you. But they've moved on and you're still holding a grudge. And... All you're doing is hurting yourself um, and, you know, also hindering uh, what could be a friendship if you decide to talk to that person. So, um, yeah, that's so that's the lesson for today um, is, you know, forgive. I, I'm not saying it's easy, uh, but yeah, uh, just reach out if you have hindering, um, you know, relationships in your life, especially at this time of year. Um, reach out to those people like you know, take the first step, you know, pick up the phone and call those people, you know, if, if, and if they don't talk to you, that's, that's on their end, you know, um, but, you know, let them make the choice, you know, don't make the choice for them, you know, so, so that's, that's what I, um, want you to take, uh, away today, especially at Christmas time, so, um, like I said, I'll, I'll do more, and our next one, we'll see what happens with Joseph's brothers, and also what happens, in the future with Joseph, if you've never read the story. So you'll have to stay tuned. So God bless.